All right, guys, it's your boy Tom, and I know it's been a while, but I'm back. Didn't talk about the Champions League, Europa Conference League, or Europa League this week, but I plan to do a little bit of that in this video, guys. So I just want to touch on the English teams and how they did and everything, you know what I mean? I don't want to do an in-depth analysis of the entire Champions League or Europa League. It's going to take way, way, way too long. And I also want to talk about five Premier League games that I haven't really touched on. Two games from the last match day and the three games that has been um, completed today and the one that's currently going on right now between Everton and Brentford. And there's one later. I think um, United are playing later as well. Let me just say this. I hope they lose again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I don't. I don't want to be too, be too long. But I want to just touch on what all the English teams did in uh, the European competitions because I want to really niche down this season with my lack of time and really focus on the Premier League and not really the other leagues. You know what I'm saying? Or a lot of other stuff because my time these days are very very limited, man. So, in terms of the Europa League. Aston Villa did uh, lose their game. I'm trying to pull up the Europa Conference League right about now. And every time I search for the Europa Conference League, I tend to get the freaking Europa League. I don't know what is, what Google, Google, come on, man. Every time I try to do it, it happens. You know, so every time I'm telling you. <laughs> like right now, I'm looking at the Europa Conference League on Google. Bam, the Europa League is popping up. I kid you not. I kid you not. I don't know why it's doing it, but um, yeah, let me just find uh, Aston Villa. Aston Villa. I should have already had it pulled up, but guys, you know, I'm expecting a thing to work properly, and it's not. You see? So, yeah. I actually expected better from Aston Villa, to be honest, in the, the Europa Conference League there, their first game, but they did lose the match, so... You know, Unai Emery, who's a master at these competitions, I thought that, you know, he would have actually... What is going on with this thing, man? What is going on? You know what I'm saying? It's like my service is very shitty. Like, I can't access the freaking game. Nothing. But anyways, let, let's go. Aston Villa did lose 3-2 to Legia Warsaw. And that, that game was in Poland. They, they were on the road. And that was a shocking result to me because I, I was like, Aston Villa looks good. And I expected them to start really well and, and be strong during the group stage. But it's only the first match that I think, you know what I mean, they should pull things back and they should come to their group. So in that game, I can't pronounce the, the names of this, these Polish players, but um, Wozolek. Scored in the third minute, Johan Duran in the sixth, then Muchi in the 26th, Luca Dean in the 38th, and then one second half goal and Muchi scored again in the 51st. I haven't had time to even watch the highlights for this game yet, so the time's been limited, man. Seriously, seriously. You know, so do apologize for that, though. But Aston Villa did put out a pretty strong team with Zaniolo, Bailey, McGinn, Duran up top. Tillemans, Camera, you know what I mean? The defense looked pretty okay for uh, a conference league match when you really think about it. So the quality was there, but then again, you're away to a, a team like Legia Wasa where the crowd was most likely hostile and maybe Aston Villa weren't comfortable, you know what I'm saying? So they got to pull things back. And maybe next time, Una Emery will put out a stronger team. And not really, you know, put out a, a such a rotated team thinking, okay, we could run over these Europa Conference League teams and then, you know, come back strong on the weekend in the league. So, yeah, maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, shortcoming there for Unai Emery. Maybe a bit of complacency for Aston Villa there as well, guys. So, um, look. I just want to pull up the the thing, the, the the group, but I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because it's raining a lot right now, but my thing is just slow and everything is taking forever to respond. So the other teams in the group is Zerinsky. I can't remember where that team is from. If you guys know, let me know in the comment section down below. AZ Altmar, Legia Wasa, 
Aston Villa. This is a tough group because AZ Altmar is going to be a pushover. And AZ Altmar lost to Zerensky. So, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it's going to... Aston Villa got their work cut out for them, though. Let's just put it that way. So, um, guys, let me know your thoughts on Villa. In the comment section down below, we got to keep it moving, though. So, let's just run over to the Europa League. Talk a bit about the Europa League where Liverpool are in the Europa League. West Ham United and Brighton and Hove and Albion. I have to say the English teams didn't do that well on the first match day of these European competitions at all. So, pretty disappointing. So, um, yet again, guys, I don't know what's going on, why this thing is taking forever to load. I need to turn off the, in, the, the cell service and then turn it back on. And then I think that'll do a lot better because I don't know, man. I need, like, you know, fast service right now. And ever since I switched to Verizon, it's just been shit. Seriously. Shit. Dog shit service, I have to say. And I'm disappointed, man. Seriously. I'm really disappointed in Verizon. I'm clicking and nothing's happening, man. Nothing is happening. Like, this is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? So... Let's let's talk a bit about these couple games really fast, and let's talk about the uh, let me see Brighton two, Ajax Athens three. Very disappointing result for Brighton, but it was a very entertaining game. I did watch this one, and Brighton I think they were quite unfortunate to lose. Even you know they came back in the game twice, they lost with a late Ezekiel punch goal so um Gibril Sidibe in the 11th minute Brighton were very susceptible to the set pieces in this match that was a hell of a goal by Sidibe what a header man and Jao Pedro from the penalty spot I think um Ajax Athens were quite sloppy in defense they give away two two unnecessary penalties and Brighton you know they got in behind on many many occasions they just weren't clinical enough in the match and Gatsinovich did score from another set piece in the 40th minute. And Jao Pedro with the penalty again in the 67th minute. And then Ezekiel Ponce, who came off the bench, smashed in one in the 84th minute. And Brighton, even though I think they were the better team throughout the match, the possession, you know, the, the chances they created, the luck just weren't on their side. You see what I mean? And uh, Ajax Athens, who, who could be a very, very tough team to play, especially at home. Walk away with a valuable three points here against, I think, um, you know, a team that we definitely got to keep our eyes on in a competition in Brighton. So big, 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 massive win for Ajax Athens, man. Damn, there's a huge dog over there in that yard, yo. Wow. <laughs> I'm not a dog person, man. Not a dog person. So if you hear it barking, you know, yeah. And I might need to move as well. I don't know why this thing... I, guys, I don't know why my service is so shitty, man. But Brighton, 15 shots, 7 on target. I got six, 6 shots on target. You know, 11 shots, 6 on target. You know, they had um, only 24% of the ball. So it was quite a feat to walk away with a victory here on the road. To Brighton Hove and Albion, who you know, a team who has been on absolute fire this season in the Premier League. So hard luck to Brighton there in terms of um the start, their first ever match in European competition there. Or at least in the Europa League. But I think it's the first in European competition. This is a tough group. I think this this is one of the groups of that I haven't looked at all the Europa League groups, but you have Ajax Athens, Marseille. Ajax, those teams play to a draw, and uh, Brighton. So Brighton got their work cut out for them in this group for sure, and it's going to be a very, very entertaining and interesting um, Europa League campaign for um, the Seagulls here. So we're going to keep it moving, man. Definitely going to keep it moving. And uh, let's talk about the West Ham game. We'll talk about West Ham, and then we talk about Liverpool. We move on to the Champions League. Yeah, this might be a longish type of video because my phone's like so-so with -so, <laughs> the 5G. And uh, yeah, it's just something chill, man. That's what I'm about these days. Just chill, talk to you guys, and just vibe. You see what I mean? So, yeah. I was watching the West Ham game as well. 
they I think had a um a better outing. Three one win over Baka Topola. And I don't know that team. Just wanna keep it real. I really don't know that team and I haven't had time to do my research. So guys, let me know where that team is from in the comment section down below. Sounds kinda Romanian to me though. Is it Romanian? Yeah, sounds kinda Romanian. So um yeah. So in this game, West Ham did concede first to um Stanich, 47th minute. And West Ham replied with three goals. Mohamed Kudos with a brace, 66, 78, and Thomas Shusek in the 82nd minute. So good comeback for um, David Moyes and his guys here. Listen, this West Ham team, the holders of the, 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 the Europa Conference League, quality side, man. You know, Fabianski coming in as a number two goalkeeper. You have Mavropanos, Ogbonna, Cresswell, Kera. All backup players. The squad is so deep that they could afford to bring on, rotate all these players. And you expect West Ham to beat, you know, a team like Baka Topola, who's quite, you know, quite an unknown in European football. It's probably their, their debut in the competition in the Europa League. I never heard of this team before. You know what I mean? So you got Ben Rama, Fornals, Kudos, Danny Ings. West Ham's squad is deep. And I like and I like what I'm seeing here from, from the Hammers. They also, you know, brought guys like Shusek, Kone, Antonio, Emerson off the bench, you know, and there's a few other players who didn't feature, but the, the squad is quite deep. And I expect West Ham to do very, very well in this competition. What do you guys think? You think West Ham's going to go on to the next round or make a deep run, maybe quarterfinals at least in this competition? I think, you know, they're a team to watch for sure, for sure, for sure. So, um... They also have Freiburg and Olympiacos to deal with in this group. In the other match, Freiburg won it. And they are second in the group behind West Ham United. So, definitely looking forward to watching the English team. My English teams, man. You know what I mean? With, with the exception of Manchester United, though. You know what I mean? I ain't fucking with United at all. I want United to lose. I don't care where they're from. Just want them to lose every game. So... <laughs> We have one more Europa League to talk, Euro, Europa League game to talk about, and we're gonna run through that one really, really quick. And that's the game for Liverpool, you know. So let's find that one. And that was a quite an interesting game too, though. But um, of course, we know Liverpool came out on top. So this game, Lask or Lask. They it scored first, and it was from a corner, quite the corner routine, and put the ball in the back of the net past um, Quivine Kelleher, who was playing um, between the sticks. Flecker, 14th minute, what a volley. And Liverpool, I don't think they, they, you know, let's say they were stunned. Let's say they were stunned, but it's been a habit. It's been a habit of Liverpool conceding the first goals. In the last, let's say, year or so. They've been conceding a lot of goals, like a lot of the first goals. But they do fight and come back very, very well. It was 1-0 at halftime. Just like the last game that Liverpool played. And they bounced back. Nunez, penalty. And at the 56th minute, Luis Diaz, 63rd minute. Mo Salah coming off the bench with a goal in the 88th. So, Liverpool also flexing their strength. And their depth in this match. I have to say, Darwin Nunes, man, such an unlucky player. So unlucky. He had a couple opportunities in the game and he didn't score with the exception of the penalty. But in terms of the depth here for Liverpool, Luis Diaz, Nunes, and Ben Doak up top. Endo, Gravenberg, and Harvey Elliott in the midfield. Simikas, Van Dyke, who's coming back from suspension. So I see why he's playing in the game to get mass fitness again. Ibrahim Konate, who did get a yellow card for some, you know, feistiness to the referee. And Stefan Bicetic, who was linked. Um, well, I think uh, Gravenberg was mostly playing a right back in that game, if I'm not mistaken. But Bicetic was listed as a right back here. It's good to see that these midfielders are, vi uh, are versatile, you know what I mean? So Liverpool... I expected to win this game, but for a second, I was thinking, wow, are Liverpool going to actually lose this game against LASK? 
nah, they, they, they held on for the win and they, you know, they, they, they came back from behind. But not going to say they weren't tested. Hovart, he looked bright. Renner, these guys look really, really bright. Lubacic, all these guys look really, really good against this Liverpool team, a rotated Liverpool team. Of course, if this was a full-strength Liverpool team where Salah and McAllister and Shobosly, Allison in goal, you know, Gakpo, Jota, Robertson, all these guys involved, it, maybe you could have seen like a 7-1 kind of scoreline. But I don't think Liverpool are ready to unleash the big guns just yet. Maybe a little deeper in the competition or if things really get desperate. But I don't think things should get desperate in this group. Liverpool should go on to win every single game. And I think Liverpool are favourites. And they would remain favourites unless a team like Sevilla goes down into the Europa League. Apart from that, Liverpool should win the Europa League. Liverpool fans, talk to me. What do you think? Do you think you're going to go on to win the Europa League? It is silverware. You know what I'm saying? It is silverware. And you're in the competition. And if you don't win it, It'll be a big disappoint, big big disappointment to the fans and even to people like me who's looking on as an opposition fan. And look, you also have an opportunity to go down into the Conference League as well. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but if Liverpool do go down into the Conference League, best believe they should win that. But we say so, but some of these teams in these competitions, man, some of these unknowns, a very, very difficult to play against. Very, very tough. So, um, guys, in terms of the, the other teams in this group, I didn't do a Europa League um, draw reaction or Europa Conference League. So, when it comes to that, guys, I'm lost. So, Toulouse and Union saint they those other teams played to a draw. They're the other teams in the group. And I think, you know... Union St. Gilwa, who has been an up-and-coming team, they might give Liverpool a little, you know, a little test, especially at home, if Liverpool continue to play a rotated team. But Liverpool should walk away with, with six wins out of six matches here in this group. That's just what I think. And I think, you know, it should happen. If it doesn't happen, I think it will be because Liverpool take their foot off the gas. They have an important match on the weekend. They... You know, heavily, really rotate the team with a, a bunch of youngsters or something, man. So, yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of the Europa League for English teams and how they did in their first match. So, let's talk about the Champions League, man. Champions League. And, of course, four English teams in the Champions League, including the holders, Manchester City, my team. The, the first game we saw was between AC Milan. Why did it go to the Premier League? I didn't search for the Premier League. I searched for the Champions League, man. Come on. AC Milan and Newcastle United. That game ended in a nil-nil draw. It was not the most entertaining game, I have to say. But AC Milan, I think, were the better team, created more the chances. And Newcastle United, they just held on, man. You know what I mean? They just held on, and I think they were really lucky to walk away with a point from that match. And they're in a the group of death, too, so it, it's, it's going to get tough. Eddie Howe's first match in European competition. They said that it's actually, well, in the Champions League, at least. They said that that's the first Champions League match he even ever attended. I was like, wow. So in this group, there's PSG, Newcastle, AC Milan, and Borussia Dortmund. So it's a very, very tough group where PSG defeated Borussia Dortmund in the other game. And, uh, you know, I expect PSG to go on to top this group. But look, it's wide open if Newcastle wants to go through to the round of 16 or even a chance to keep European playing European football by going down into the Europa League. Third is also there for the taking. They, they just need to continue to play solid football and get themselves in form because they are not in form at all. Newcastle are not in good form. But I think that draw would bode well for their confidence. So, solid, solid um, result if you ask me. It's a better result than the one Manchester United picked up. <laughs> it is. 
It is. So uh, let's see what Newcastle does in terms of the Champions League um, group phase this season. I didn't make predictions, so you know I can't have I can't I, I can't reference to that right about now. So in terms of the game between United and Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich four, Manchester United three, and I know. The score line. If someone, you know, who didn't watch the game look at the score line, they'd be like, oh, oh, that must have been a thriller. That must have been a very, very close game. Guys, this game was nowhere near to close. Nowhere. Far from close. It was a game dominated by Bayern Munich. And when they eventually took their, their foot off the gas in the second half by rotating players and all of that, that's only when United, you know, got a couple opportunities and score. Apart from that, it was a poor performance by United, and they look they look terrible. They look terrible. I know they have a lot of injuries and a lot of off the field issues going on right now, but just to sum things up, United are just a terrible football club. And I'm not only saying that because I'm a Man City fan, but United are just a terrible ran terribly ran football club. I'm not saying they weren't great in the past but it doesn't seem like they're going to return to their heights of greatness ever again they've been trying how many managers have they tried you know what i'm saying moyes van hall Mourinho, Solskjaer. you got um what, what, what's his name man ralph ragnick who remembers ragnick <laughs> you have ten hog now who looks clueless uh, 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 a boss manager like ten hog Quality, world-class manager like Ten Hag. Looks like, you know, a, a third division, Ered, third division Eredivisie manager right now at United. So, Leroy Sane in the 28th minute. Serge Gnabry in the 32nd. 2-0, Rasmus Hjellen scored a scrappy goal, but a good goal. His um, Champions League debut there for United and scoring his first United goal. Brought United back in the game somewhat on the school, school sheet, but in terms of, you know, just the game, they weren't. Harry Kane, 53rd minute penalty after the Ericsson handball. Definitely a handball. And then Casimiro pulled, pulled one back in the 88th minute. And the game was long gone by then because, you know, you look, 3-1. Yeah, United, if they score, they make it uncomfortable. But after they scored, they conceded through the substitute, Mattis Tell, and Casimiro scored another consolation goal in the 95th minute. So Bayern Munich, currently under Thomas Tuchel. I'm not saying they look very, very good or well-polished, but they, they look way better than Manchester United. You know what I mean? Both teams need work. Both teams need to get their, you know, their lineups at their best, at their strongest. But... Bayern Munich look way, way better than Manchester United on the day, man. So, yeah. That's just pretty much my summary of the match. I'm not going to, you know, just go on forever and ever about this game. But I'm glad to see United lose. Let's just say that. Ha, ha, ha. Let us talk about um, Arsenal, man. You know, Arsenal PSV. Arsenal PSV. I don't know why this thing is so slow, guys. It is so slow jesus christ why is it so slow i never had this problem before i have to be wait like i'm using dial up on the phone imagine that like i'm using dial up on the phone guys like i'm still waiting for the thing to load this is wild anyways um <clears throat> arsenal won their game while it loads let me just give my thoughts they look good. They look good. But I do expect them to beat PSV. You see what I'm saying? They look, you know, in, in the Champions League, they look really, really good. But I have to say in the Premier League now, you know, the competition is a bit tougher. And I expected PSV to put out a better performance, but it wasn't a good one. Let's just say that. It, it really wasn't a good one. They couldn't hold up to this Arsenal team. I don't know what it is, guys, but I'm trying to... This thing is not loading nothing, man. It ain't loading nothing. This is... 
Oh, man. But, yeah. Arsenal, they look pretty good in that game, though. Definitely. And I hope they don't get too gassed because PSV, they, they, they're not the strongest opponent. And Arsenal are not in the strongest group in the Champions League. I think they will come through and go on to the round of 16. And if they get a tough draw, that's where the true test would really, really start. So... Yeah, guys, I'm just waiting for this thing to load so that the freaking, um, so I could, you know, talk about the, the goals and stuff briefly. But I don't know what is going on with my service, man. You see what I mean? It keeps switching from 5G to LTE. Like, why did I switch to Verizon, man? I know I'm saving about $50 on my phone bill every month, but the service... Really, really shitty, man. Really shitty, I have to say. Really shitty. Maybe I need to close out some of my um, tabs. I have a lot of tabs open. And it's probably eating up the bandwidth. So, yeah, let me let me do that. I have a lot of tabs open, guys. Wow. Wow, no, long, no wonder this is taking so freaking long to load everything. I have a million tabs open. Yeah, I don't even think that's going to work, though. Wow. Imagine I'm clicking. I'm, I'm here clicking more matches. I'm getting nothing. Oh, my God. What a disaster here. All right. Now it's working a little bit better. But, yeah, as we wait for this thing to load, guys, I'm not even stressing. I'm not even stressing it. <laughs> I'm really not stressing it, man. So let's just get the Arsenal game really, really fast. Um... I talk about Man City. Yeah, Arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal 4, PSV nil. Did watch the game. And as I said, Arsenal, man, they look good in the match. I did say I'm not convinced by Arsenal in the Premier League. And I'm still not convinced. I'm not convinced. They play Spurs tomorrow. And let's see if they smash Spurs in the in the, in the North London derby. So Saka in the 8th minute, Leandro Trossard in the 20th. Trossard has been a revelation at Arsenal, man. What a player. What a player. Always admired him at, admired him at Brighton. I can't talk. Always admired him at Brighton, and he's gone over to Arsenal, and he just continued where he left off. It's just that at Brighton, he was a starter every week, but now at Arsenal, sometimes he starts, other times he's on the bench, but... If he keeps banging him in like this, Arteta would have no other choice but to start him. Gabriel Jesus in the 38th minute. These were some really, really well-worked goals by Arsenal. And that Odegaard goal, oh, man. <laughs> Listen, this guy Martin Odegaard, he's so good, man. He is so good. And no wonder Arsenal just tied him down to a five-year, well, to a contract extension to 2028, which means... That his salaries probably doubled, and when when clubs do that, they want to hold these players for a long time, and they try to you know keep teams like Real Madrid. I don't know if he's gonna go back there, but Barcelona, Bayern Munich, Man City, etc., United, Chelsea, etc., off your back when it comes to them. You know, trying to lure the players away. But I just have a I, I just have a feeling that Martin Odegaard will be a Manchester City player in the future. I think he would be like a perfect replacement for like a Kevin De Bruyne. So Arsenal, watch out, man. Watch out. Coming we're coming for Martin Odegaard. And look, it would be nice for the other teams to have quality players, but of course you wanna wanna be the best. So you wanna go out there and get the best players. And if you have two Norwegians in the team, you know, it makes it even better. I know we have a Norwegian in Oscar Bob as well, but still, he's no Martin Odegaard. But quality win for Arsenal. PSV, it looked pretty much toothless throughout the game. You know, Noah Lang had a couple look-ins. You know, Luke the Young had a, you know. But all in all, it was a game dominated by the Gunners, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much. So, in terms of the other teams in the group, the other teams in the group, let me just pull up the table. Lons, the French team, and Sevilla. Sevilla would be a tough, tough team to play. Lons, an element of surprise. 
But this group, in my opinion, is a very light group. And Arsenal should come out of this group on top. Go on to the round of 16. And I, I think Arsenal really got a chance of going deep into the competition. I really do. I really, really do think maybe about quarterfinals. I think they might bow out at the quarterfinals when they meet a tough, tough team. But who knows, man? Who knows? Who knows? Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit for Arsenal if they continue to play really, really good football. But it, I'm, I'm talking the Champions League. Premier League, I'm not convinced, man. I'm not convinced. So, yeah. In terms of the other game, guys, let's talk about the game, um, the Manchester City game. So, let me just let this thing, um, this thing load. Jesus Christ. Things taking forever, man. I don't. I, I really don't know what's going on today with this internet. I don't know if it's because it's raining, or if if it's just the the service is just shitty altogether. But it never. It was never this slow. It was never really this slow. So um, let's just pull up this game right now. So Man City three, Savannah Zvezda one, and. Bukhari scored in the 45th minute, got played in behind, and scored the, the game's first goal. Man City defense caught out once again, and you know, that's one weakness of City. But I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really um, shook up by that. I wasn't worried at all, because that's been the order of things lately. We concede first, most games, and we come back. We come back to smash teams, and that's exactly what we did. We did it immediately, just like the previous game. That was that was against West Ham, and we conceded through James Ward Prowse, and then Jeremy Duku came back in the first play he scored. Well, this time around, Julian Alvarez, 47th minute. That was set up by um, can't even remember how all the goals went in, but uh, I think that was Haaland and Alvarez involved, scrappy finish, and Alvarez again in the 60th minute. I think Alvarez has been on fire this season. And guys, just remember I said this. If Man City goes on to win the title this season, watch out for Julian Alvarez giving Erling Haaland stiff competition for play of the season. Just remember I said it because the amount of assists and goals that he's scoring, quietly, man, flying under the radar right there, you know, for Manchester City. And Rodri, oh man, that was, a, that was a smashing goal though. Did receive a red card today and we get to that. But that was a smashing goal to beat Zvezda. Three goals to one. Listen, I wasn't expecting any other result. We are the champions. We are the holders. And we, we are definitely the favorites and were the favorites in this match to walk away with the victory. So I'm not going to, you know, go on and on and on. It's not a very, very, very tough group. And I think Man City should come out on top. Maybe five wins and a draw. City always, you know, slip up sometime in the group. Maybe against a Leipzig. But young boys are the other team. Young boys and Leipzig are the other teams in this group. And Leipzig did beat young boys in their opening match as well. So it's Leipzig, City, Zvezda. And young boys. So it'll be a scrap for third, I think, between Zvezda and young boys. Man City and Leipzig should go through to the round of 16. So that's pretty much it for um, the Champions League, Europa League, and Conference League matches. So what we're gonna do? You know, we're gonna talk Premier League, man. It was it was it was a routine win, man. You know, I know people may say, Oh, Zvezda scored and the Zvezda fans are probably happy. When these players are celebrating their goals, I'll be just laughing to myself. I'm like, just calm down. Just calm down. I know you celebrate because it's a really good moment, but just calm down, okay? Because you know you know this Man City team are going to come back. So right now in the Brentford-Everton game, Everton, a 2-1 up. I'm happy for Everton. I want them to do well. I really do. Burnley do play Manchester United later at 3 o'clock. I am definitely going to catch that game. So, let's start the matches that have been completed today. But, oh, I do have to talk about the games that, um, that I haven't touched on as yet. So, this is not going to be super, super large. I just want to, you know, just touch on these matches really, really quick. 
because my internet is just bugging out, man. I don't know what is going on with the internet. It's just, I don't know what is, what is going on. Nothing's working. <laughs> like nothing is working, guys. I know I've said it a hundred times, but it is, it is. Imagine me trying to go live right now in the rain on cell service. Oh man, I'll be looking wild out here. So, just wanted to touch on the game I didn't talk about as yet, and that's Newcastle one, Brentford nil. Didn't talk about that one at all, and I'm not gonna really elaborate, but just to touch on what happened. Um. Nottingham Forest won, Burnley won. So those teams did pick up points there on that Monday. That standalone fixture was played on that day. So in terms of the matches that has been completed so far for match day six, Man City two, Nottingham Forest nil, and um, Crystal Palace nil, Luton, um, Fulham, Fulham nil, Crystal Palace nil, Luton Town won, West Ham United Wolves won, pardon me. I don't know what is going on. I've got, <laughs> just got distracted. Everton have scored a third goal, so they are definitely going to go on to win their first match this season. So, Palace nil, Fulham nil. Nothing to really talk about. Did not watch that game, so I'm not really going to go into that one. Luton Town won. Carlton Morris with the goal from the penalty spot. Pedro Neto with the equalizer after Bellegarde got sent off for some dumb, dumb move. You know, him and the other player got locked in and he kind of stamped away the, the player's foot. And he got sent off straight red for player endangerment. I think he's going to get like a two-match ban or three-match ban even. So that's what happened so far this weekend. In terms of the Man City Forest match, this one was a very strange one. Man City dominating the first half. Dominated the first half. Foden with a really, really good goal. I think Rodri, Walker, Walker with the cutback. And Foden just slapped it in with the left foot. Really good goal. I think that's his first goal this season, if I'm not mistaken. Erling Haaland, seven minutes late in the 14th minute. Matthias Nunes getting you know, involved. Foden, I think, in the build-up as well. And I'm telling you... Nunez is growing on me. He's definitely growing on me. I'm really glad that he changed his boots. I hate to see players in black boots. And, uh, yeah, it just looks weird to me, man. But he got on some nice flashy boots now. And he's crossed that ball really nice over to Erling Haaland, who smashed it in the back of the net with his head. That's why his eighth goal this season, ridiculous, ridiculous. But the biggest talking point would be Rodri losing his head in the 46th minute by... You know, putting his hands to um, Morgan Gibbs White's neck like he wanted to choke the life out of Gibbs White. Gibbs White must have really upset a uh, relatively calm Rodri. He's always calm, cool, calm, you know, collected. And for him to lose his head like that was really unexpected. And I think Rodri did let his team down, let Pep Guardiola down, let himself down. And I, and I know he learned from that because the second half, was totally different, man. But I like I like it though. I like the the different you know scenarios where we're not always dominating the match. And Forrest did fight back really well. They came back. Colum Hudson Odoi and um, Ilanga came on and really give us a run. You know, run for money. Ilanga forced a really big save out of Edison and Willie Bali with the, the follow up. And you know, they give us a really good fight there, albeit not scoring any goals. But look, look. Big shout out to Jeremy Duku. He started the game brightly. Phil Foden, Julian Alvarez had a good game. Haaland, a couple opportunities that he could have scored, but he didn't, but he got his goal on the day. Solid game from the back line of Vardio, who did misplay some passes, you know, but Ruben Diaz, Edison, Akanji, Kyle Walker, you know. Um, it's nice to see Calvin Phillips get a run in, a, 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 a look in. Matthias Nunez had a solid game, but Calvin Phillips, I think he he was he looks a little rusty, you know. Give away the ball a couple of times, held on to the ball a little too long, in my opinion, when he came on there as well. Nathan Ake came on for a run out. So it was a it was a solid performance from you know for City, adapting to the, the conditions of the match. And you need that. You definitely need that though. So for the other matches, I did have the the Wolves, the Wolves game. 
the Wolves Luton Town game right there by the you know watching on my other phone but I'm not really gonna elaborate too much on that one and of course the Fulham Crystal Palace I did not see any minute of that one not even a highlight so in terms of Brentford Everton that's going on right now as I mentioned Everton are leading three goals to one the Corey in the six Jensen with the equalizer in the 28 the Corey did hit the post as well Tukovsky in the 67th and this would be a big boost for Everton as Dominic Calvert-Lewis scored his first goal of the season in the 71st minute coming off the bench. So that's it for um, the games that are currently going on. As I mentioned, Burnley, they play United later. I hope they pick up a W. And in terms of the other matches, tomorrow we got Chelsea playing Aston Villa, Arsenal playing Tottenham. Liverpool, West Ham, Brighton and Bournemouth, and Sheffield United versus Newcastle. I will come back tomorrow, just like I did today, to give you guys a nice little roundup of those matches. I just had to talk the Champions League, though. I needed to do that, definitely. I couldn't, you know, continue without doing that. I know you guys, you know, whoever is interested in the content, wanted, probably want to hear what I had to say about the European competitions, you know. So, guys, this is what the table looks like so far. Man City, 6-6, six and six, 18 points. Tottenham, a second with 13, 5 play. Liverpool, 5 play, 13. Arsenal with the same, 5 play, 13. Brighton, you know, a fifth, 5 play, 12 points. West Ham, a sixth, 5 play, 10 points. And in terms of the teams that have played six games, Crystal Palace, are eight with eight points. Solid start, I heard Roy Hudson is sick. Hope he feels better soon. Fulham, a ninth with eight points in six. Brent, Brentford are now 12th, six points in six matches. Everton have climbed up to 15th with four points in six matches. Wolves are 16, four points in six matches. And Luton, who played today, they only have, they picked up their first points of the season. So congratulations to them. They're at the bottom of the table there. So um, th that's pretty much it. And yeah, it was a long video, 42 minutes or so. But um, I had to get these things off my chest though. I want to be more consistent, guys. I wanted to go live during the week, but I was so tired, man. I was so tired and distracted. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to stay up here and just lay down and sleep. You know, but I'm back and I'm back with a bang. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the little session. You know, it's not easy to go 40 plus minutes uninterrupted, inter internet messing up and just, you know, giving me a whole lot of problems. So, um, yeah, I would love to do a live stream to just talk the other Champions League fixtures and all. But for now, guys, Premier League, the Prem de la Prem is the focus. So, guys, I'm your boy Dom. Let me know if I miss any major talking points in the comment section down below. Enlighten me. You know, Please get involved. Driver seat belt. Man, I know. I live right there. I'm not going to fasten the seatbelt. But yeah, guys, talk to me. Let me know if I miss any major talking points down below. Don't forget to smash up the thumbs up button if you got this far in the video. And from your boy Dom, until my next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Rich. Squad. Peace.